We are back at it with our Texas Rangers opening day 2022. At the conclusion of our last episode, which I know it was a very long episode, the episodes are going longer in this series than they did in my original OOTP series with the White Sox a few years ago. I hope you guys are actually enjoying that. But at the end of our last episode, I went over the roster. I talked about the 26 people that made the opening day roster. I talked about Solak having a one-month injury. I talked about prospects. I talked about, you know, people on the 40-man. So we should have a pretty good idea of, like, who's on the team and what I'm thinking for this year. As far as my predictions, because, you know, to be honest with you all, like, this whole series is pre-recorded. Like, by the time you're watching this, it's over for me. Um, it's Let's make this interactive to some degree by saying... Go ahead and type your predictions for what my record will be. And I'm going to drop a prediction for my record as well. We were 73 and 89 last year. We've added some guys like Machado, probably being the biggest one. Sonny Gray we added as well. Jesse Winker we added as well. I think we're going to go 84 and 78 and finish third in the division. I think the Angels and the Astros, who I've looked at, uh, are going to finish ahead of us. The The Angels have put together a really solid team. Marsh is coming along. Joe Dell is coming along. And then Matt uh, Matt Tice is kind of turned into what Jared Walsh is for them in real life now. So he's like just this monster first base bat. They've moved on from pool holes. You know, they've got Rendon playing well. They have Trout, obviously. And so this is just a, a solid team all around. The pitching is still you know, kind of suspect, but I mean that, you know, that's the Angels. And then um, for Houston, they're stacked. We talked about their offseason. They added both Scherzer and Bauer. The only thing that could really stop this team is just money, I guess. They added Seager too, by the way. So Seager replaces uh, Correa. So yeah, it's just a, it's just a crazy lineup. And uh, they're, they're scary. They're probably, maybe, I'm going to say they're probably the best team in the American League, but we'll see how things end up but yeah so I'm thinking we finished third behind those teams and uh, hopefully we can just get get above 500 I think would be a reasonable goal for this year Um, but yeah let's get it going what I'm going to do is I'm going to play opening day which is kind of uh, how I play this game is I'll play opening day and then I'll sim through you know the season day by day clicking like this but we will play it out we will get to see what our team looks like on the field so let's go ahead and do that we'll be playing at the Detroit Tigers Okay, Zach Collins, my maybe not so prototypical leadoff man to lead off the season for us, facing Matt Manning. And uh, he's going to hit an opposite field flyout. That's going to be caught by Parker Meadows, making his MLB debut. Jesse Winker now at the plate. He's going to hit this one to center field. Okay, well, if we hit a flyout to right field, we'll have the trifecta here. So let's see if Machado can do it. Machado has himself a single. Ah, first hit of the season, our big superstar trade. It's a two-out single, and that's going to bring up Nate Lowe. Nate Lowe grounding out to the second baseman, and that's going to do it for the first inning. Okay, Sonny Gray facing off here against Parker Meadows. Parker Meadows launches this one. Uh, that was hit really hard to Winker, but it was also directly at Winker, so that was good. But yeah, that was a little bit uh, concerning for me to watch. I didn't, I didn't care for that. You don't want to see someone, you know, get taken deep on their first pitch like that. That's more like it. A pop out to the catcher, Vasquez, and then a kill Badu on a three-one pitch. Walks. Okay, so they have a runner on base. Torkelson now at the plate. He's a big power hitter. He's gonna pull the ball to Machado, ground ball, and that'll do it. That's your first inning, zero to zero. Bottom of the third here. No runs yet in this game. Matt Manning looks really good. Sonny Gray a little bit shaky. Let's see if he can get a clean inning. Strikeout there on Rodgers. Now pitching to Parker Meadows, the leadoff hitter. He walks. Willie Castro. Oh, they steal. I was not ready for Meadows to steal. That was was a misplay on my part. So now they have a runner on second. Let's see what uh, he can do in this jam. He walks Castro. So that does set up a double play ball, potentially. We'll see what Gray can do, but he's gotten himself into a tricky spot. And he, wow, he's loaded the bases. So with one out, he's loaded the bases. 
I knew he was doing shaky. I don't want to pull him necessarily. I mean, it's only the third inning, right? And he's thrown 50 pitches, so. But he has four walks already. So his, he's lost control for this start. We do have some good relievers. I could bring in Hyun Jung Yang. That would be my biggest temptation is to kind of use him to piggyback off Gray here. I'm going to get him warmed up at least, and then we're, but we'll pitch to uh, Torkelson. This is a dangerous spot. He's a big power hitter, 3-1 count. And yeah, we've just we just walk in a run. Why not? We need uh we need pitches in the strike zone, Sonny. I don't know how else to I don't know how else to tell you that. So disappointing. Five walks and two point one innings pitched. I think I'm gonna get aggressive here. And uh I'm gonna visit the mound. And uh I'm gonna I'm gonna sub out Sonny Gray because he's walked five batters, you know, that he's just uh it's just tough to watch right now. He can't get control, so we're gonna bring in Hong Hyun Jong Yang. Now, in a regular season game, I understand you wouldn't necessarily want to be that aggressive with pulling your pitcher. You know, you need innings, but, you know, this is the one game we get to play out in the year. I want to try to win it, and so I'm going to play it a little bit more like a playoff game. So Yang to Clemens. Clemens hits it deep. It's going to be caught, but the a run will tag off that, I imagine. And yes, a run will tag off of that. So now with runners on the corners, two outs, pitching to Grossman. We get a ground out. So we get out of it, but it's a 2 nothing ball game. Detroit leading. Okay, here we go. Now we might be cooking with peanut oil. Jesse Winker and Machado have both walked to lead off the inning. So maybe Matt Manning is human after all. And that is going to be a nice single there. Will a run score off of it? No, but it will load the bases. So right off of that bad inning from Gray, we've managed to load the bases with no outs. So I hope we can get some runs here. Marwan Gonzalez, he hits a weak dribbler, and the only play they have is at first base, so we score a run off that. I would say that's a pretty good outcome for us. I was afraid that was going to be a double play, so that's going to bring up a Trammell, 2-1 to one ball game, and he walks, so the bases are loaded once again for Christian Vasquez this time. Vasquez pulls it nicely done by Vasquez in his debut for our team. We've got another run coming home. Will he be safe? Yes, he will. We grab the lead. 3-2, to two, baby. Here I was all worried. So still rallying here. J.P. Crawford, is that going to be an inning-ending double play? No, nope. he will hustle to first. We have runners at the corners, two outs for Tavares. Tavares, he, get down ball. Yes, he serves one to the left fielder. It's a big play because that scores us another run. So back to the top of the order here with Zach Collins. He walks. So this has been just a nightmare inning for Matt Manning, who had such a great start to this game. Jesse Winker at the plate, and he goes down. Okay, I, it was a full count there, so I thought it might have been a walk, but that's a four-run inning for us. We now lead 4-2. to two. Our starter is out, though, so we'll have to bullpen the rest of this game. Okay, kind of a tricky spot here. Two runners on with one out, and a balk is called. Wow, you don't see that too often, and that's a very costly balk. It's making me consider loading the bases here. I don't think I'm going to do that, though. I don't think I'm going to do that, though. But we need we need innings from Yang because we pulled Gray so early. So we're going to pitch to uh, Meadows. Meadows is going to send one out to left field. This could be a tag play. Winker, not the best arm. And so they will score a run off that 4-3 to three now. But if we can get out of this, having just allowed the run run, that'd be huge. That's going to be a passed ball from Vasquez. I guess maybe you call that a wild pitch. I don't know. So Rodgers is on third. This is a tricky spot against Willie Castro here. We really don't want to allow this run. That's going to be sent to center field, but it's catchable for Taveras. So through four innings, the score is four to three. Not the best pitching performances from either side. All right, we've got ourselves in a prompt situation. So Winker singled. Taveras was on first. He's going to try to do first to third. I'm going to say yes to this because if we got him over to third base then it would create like a potential sacrifice, productive out type situation. Uh, Tavares is very quick. We'll see. I'm going to risk it. You don't want to make the third out at third base, but maybe we can try to make the second out at third base. There goes Tavares. He's going to be safe. And actually, this is huge too. Winker advances to second off that. So they're going to bring in Addison Reed. And now we get Machado with two runners on. Ooh, that is a huge play. That is a huge play right there that's going to prevent a run. 
Wow. Okay. So it's, it comes down to Nate Lowe. He walks. Okay. So base is loaded for Marwin. Marwin. Yes. Perfect. Sends a single right up the middle. Beautifully done by Marwin. Do we get the second run on the play? Yes, we do. That's a huge piece of two out hitting by Marwin Gonzalez. We now lead six to three. Taylor Trammell strikes out to end the inning, but that was such a huge moment in the game. I could feel the WPA shift right there. <laughs> Chance to tack on a run here, potentially two runners on, two outs for Jesse Winker. Winker pulls it down the line, but it's fielded by, I think that was Torkelson, and so that'll do it for the inning. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. I have Martin in right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start warming up uh, Rasmussen, who's our beast closer that we uh, traded for. But we'll see what Martin can do. He can at least face Robbie Grossman. Robbie Grossman with a single off the middle. We don't like that. Okay, that's going to bring up Paredes. Hmm. I'm starting to ask myself if I turn to Rasmussen here. I'm gonna, Okay, now I'm definitely turning to Rasmussen. Jeez. So Martin came out and did a good job getting that strikeout, but then it didn't go too great after that. It's time to bring in Rasmussen, potentially for a six-out save here. We'll see. But facing Hunter Renfro, this, these are big at-bats. Oh my goodness, not our closer, not our star closer we just traded for. <laughs> the Tigers completely turn it around in the eighth inning with a three-run home run from Hunter Renfro. I can't believe that. If this were the playoffs, I would be steaming mad. Uh, but it's opening day, so we get the strikeout on Rodgers. We get the strikeout on Meadows. We get the... Strikeout on Castro. Yeah, I need you to just do that, but not allow a home run to Hunter Renfro. <laughs> okay, so that leads us to the ninth. We're going to have Machado to lead off, and we need a run. Or two. Strikeout there. They've brought in Brian Garcia, who I assume is their closer. Nate Lowe. Mm, this is no good. This is no good, guys. I really thought we were going to win this one. Marwin Gonzalez. Uh, that's the ball game. Ah, uh, that's a, that leaves a bad feeling. That was a huge, look at the C, look at, well, not the CWP, but look at the win probability added on that home run by Renfro from, uh, from three to four. Ugh, that was a heartbreaker right there. So we lose to Detroit and yeah, Martin and Rasmussen kind of blew it, to be honest. b -like did a good job. We had to deal with Gray not giving us innings, but that's your that's your final score, seven to six. Hopefully, that's not indicative of what we're doing this season. All right, so I'm here on April 23rd. It hasn't been the best start to the season for us. We're five and nine, and we've lost a lot of like blowout games too, which I don't really enjoy. Anyways, injury news: Tyler Matzek, torn rotator cuff, twelve months. This is kind of like what happened to uh, Bukowskis last year, getting that torn rotator cuff in April. He was off to a terrific start, and so that's a bummer. He had, in general, pitched extremely well as a member of the Texas Rangers, but we're not going to be with his services for a year, so I need to call up a reliever to make up for that as he goes to the 60-day injured list. We're going to go check out AAA. Bukowskis, we could call up, but... He's having trouble walking the yard in the uh, AAA round rock, so I'm not going to call him up. Hearn is an option. Mills is an option. I guess I'll call up Hearn. So that's a bummer. Hearn's going to take uh, the role that Matzek was taking. And, uh, yeah, on we go. As far as how the team's been doing, you know, our bullpen ERA has been really bad. So that's been a bummer. Our offense is improved, but it's still below average. So we just need to play better as a team. But hey, it's only been 14 games. So let's give them a little bit more time. Another small injury update here. Josh Lindblom had a strained back. I decided to put him on the injured list just to be safe. What that allows us to do is put Belak in the rotation. And we've brought up Dane Dunning to do long relief slash be an emergency starter. So that's that's my update. We're 7-12, and 12, and uh, I would like for us to have a better start than 7-12, and 12, is my opinion. So we're here on May 4th, and Nick Solak is ready to come back from his injury. He's missed the first month of the season. 
I was looking at potential ways we could use him. And the two players struggling the most, I would say, in general are, where is he? Zach Collins is one. Zach Collins is hitting leadoff for us. Clearly, it's not going well for him. And then Tremel's the other one. Tremel's been also just awful to start the year. Problem is, Collins has, or he doesn't have options anymore. So I can't option him to the minors as things stand. I could, but it would be like a wave and DFA situation. I could send down Tremel, and I wouldn't be opposed to doing that, but it's going to require, require some rearranging of positions, like Winker would have to play right field or Solak would have to play right field. I guess what I could do is I could... Okay, I've got it. I can play Marwin in a corner, and then I can play Solak in at second base. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But yeah, uh, the Zach Collins experiment, you know, I may soon be losing my patience here. Uh, he may end up uh, waived and uh, DFA'd, and so if another team picks him up and wants to use him as a catcher, be my guest. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send down Trammell to AAA because it just hasn't been a good start to the season for him. I'm going to bring in Solak, and he's going to play second base while Marwin plays a corner. And uh, yeah, that's my plan. Okay, I've changed up my lineups for the time being. Hopefully going to try to instill some new mojo into the team. We're going to have Winker lead off instead of Collins. Solak is going to hit second and play second. This is against right-handed pitching, so those are the biggest changes there. Against left-handed pitching, I'm going to put Solak in left field, and he'll hit lead off, and then... We have, you know, McCormick playing right field. That hasn't changed, but Vidal Brujan enters the scene playing second base against left-handed pitching. He has had a uh, solid start to the season, and just depending on how certain players do and whatever we try to end up doing with, you know, Nick Solak, uh, it seems like he's going to get into a starting role at second base sooner or later, but we have to figure out some other things first. You know, it's just about what positions we want to use certain players at. So I'm looking at Bukowskis here in AAA, and he's just been getting shelled. It's a tough run environment down there in AAA Round Rock. I, I can appreciate that much, but he's walking, you know, 11 per 9, so he's not really helping himself. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set his game strategy back to be used as a reliever because at this point, you know, our bullpen hasn't actually been too great to start. So if he can get going as a reliever, uh, that could be huge for us in the majors, so we'll be rooting for him to you know get together as a reliever. The other thing is, you know, Cal Raleigh's out to a uh, decent start to the year in AAA, and you look at his stats, you kind of can't help but wonder if this whole Zach Collins thing doesn't work out, then then he can play that role this year and then move into the catching in 2023 when Christian Vasquez uh, is off the team. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, but I'm gonna let. Collins, you know, get a few more cracks at it, and we're going to let Cal uh, Raleigh, you know, just figure it out at AAA just a little bit longer, but I'm definitely considering that for the future. Guys, it's May 12th, and you might think it's extreme. You know, Sonny Gray, if you look at his history, like, when this is around when we traded for him, right? And we have a 55 stuff, 55 movement, 50 contact, and that was, or not contact, uh, control, and that was just back in October, and that was with high accuracy, and now with very high accuracy, everything's just come down for him, and, you know, I, we, he's seen as like a back-end rotation starter now, He, I thought he was going to be like an ace-type pitcher for us, and I just don't think this trade has really worked out for us at all, in fact, it, it looks even worse when you consider, you know, you know, Steel Walker's doing well, and he was always going to do decent, and uh, but um, we traded uh, to Santana for him, and they've been using him as a closer quite wisely. You know, I tried to use him as a starter, put him in AAA where he struggled. They've put him at closer in the majors, and I think that's been the right move for them. So this trade hasn't really worked out. I think I'm going to try to cut my losses on Sonny Gray and just see what I can get for him on the open market. So in my attempts to trade him, I really can't get anything for him, even if I cover all the contract. The best option would be Luis Castillo, which I think would be a fair option, but he's expensive. And then, you know, 
I'm still covering all of the Sonny Gray money, and it's like Cincinnati Reds already fell for this trick once. You know, <laughs> am I going to fall for it again? So I think as far as our options go with Gray, you know, we could try him long relief. We could cut him, but I th- yeah, I just don't know what to do with this guy. I don't want him in the rotation, though. I'll, I'll tell you that much. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Dane Dunning, who pitched, you know, three good games uh, in uh, AAA round rock, came up to the majors as a reliever, you know, pitched for us, you know, started 20 games for us last year. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe have, like, Dane Dunning take his spot for now. Uh, or, you know, or what I can do is, well, it's so tough. I just don't really have a spot for Sonny Gray, guys. That's that's kind of what I'm getting at. I don't have a spot for him. So I'm going to do something pretty wild, and um, I'm just going to wave a DFA him and see if someone wants to take his uh, contract on. Keep in mind, we're only paying about 60% of this $10.7 million, but I just, don't, I just don't have a spot for Sonny Gray at this point. I could be giving innings to younger you know, more long-term arms for us that we want to be able to develop as players. So Sonny Gray, wave DFA him. And then I'm going to do is I'm going to take, go injured list, get Lindblom back. And then how is Lindblom pitching? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have Lindblom long relief, Dane Dunning starting rotation. And yeah, that's how we're going to handle it. So... This pitching as a whole has been tough to figure out this year, but uh, hopefully we can still turn it around. So Sonny Gray has cleared waivers if I try to put him in AAA. He refuses to be demoted, which I think is fair. You know, he's built up a reputation. He's, uh, you know, he has eight years plus in the majors. So I think I'm just going to cut him and I'm going to I'm gonna have to eat that salary. It doesn't feel great, but um, yeah, I just... I have pitchers that I like more. Among them, I would say our Bukowskis, who is now, you know, since we put him in the pen, looks really good. He's had four really good appearances, could be up in the majors soon. And then another big development, you know, over this offseason and and into uh, the AAA season is Drew Strotman. This guy can really pitch, man. He may finish the season in the rotation. At the very least, I expect him to finish the season in the bullpen if he keeps pitching like this at AAA. So he's been huge. Really good pitcher, and uh, I'm so glad we uh, traded for him. But Sonny Gray, I'm not glad we traded for him. (laughs) He stunk. Okay, we're here May 29th. We've been playing kind of 500 ball lately after a bad start. Uh, A couple things. I think on June 1st, I'm going to really take a look at the pitching staff, try to figure out if there's some moves I can make there. And then we have a Manny Machado injury diagnosis pending. He is durable. So we're hoping it's not going to be too bad. He's off to a you know fantastic start this season. He's been you know everything we asked for in a player, in a superstar. So I just hope he's doing all right. So let's kind of skip ahead, see what's going on with Machado. That was the deepest sigh in all of recorded human history. <laughs> well, I mean, you can read it. You can read it on your screen. You have eyes. But uh, anyways, May Machado, torn ACL, out 78 months. When I traded for Machado, I was like, you know, it's a lot of money to tie up in a player long term, but he's durable. His injury pronus is durable. You know, that's what's going to make this work is that I don't have to worry about him getting hurt. Turns out I do. Turns out a really, really deal. So that's going to be a tough thing for us to figure out. Um, you know, he was the best player on the team, and we weren't off to a great start. So we'll figure it out. We will figure this thing out. Shirt and Apostle to me is not yet an option. He's not hitting well at AAA at the moment. So I feel like if I just called him up, he would just hit even worse. So I'll have to figure things out. But yeah, he's kind of the first person that came to mind when I saw this Machado injury, but he's not doing too well at AAA. So we're going to at least let him try to get it together there before we call him up to the big leagues. We're here on June 1st, and I'm going to shake things up. Zach Collins, I tell you what, these guys, his ranks are really good. That 75i, and he just can't get on base. Like, And I've I've tried with him. I really have. I've given him 
you know, a lot of plate appearances. I sent him down triple A. He did well, you know, in, in 21. And then this year, just nothing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, waive and DFA him because he's out of options. Someone may claim him. That wouldn't shock me at all. And if he goes on to greatness somewhere else, you know, whatever. I, I gave him a chance, I feel like. So I'm going to waive and DFA Zach Collins, and I'm going to bring in Cal Raleigh to basically play his role. So that's going to mean playing DH because Vasquez is our catcher. And I just feel like he can do better, you know. So we're going to have to figure out these lineups. Um, I figured it out for the most part. So I think what I'm going to do is play Solak at third base, which is not anywhere near his best position, but that's kind of what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to go ahead and set him to third base position here. And then Vidal Brujan, if there's any sort of uh, good news on this, is that he now gets a full-time second base job, which he's for sure earned. He's played really well to start the year. And then, um, yeah. So I think that's what that's going to look like for now. Taylor Trammell is still not doing well in AAA, so I'm not going to call him up as a potential outfielder for us. So that leaves Marwin. Uh, by the way, Marwin plays third base against lefties. Solak, we're going to keep in uh, left field. But wait a second, why don't I just play... Oh yeah, that's right. So I can't play Solak in left field because Winker plays left field. But when Winker sits, Solak can play left field and Marwin can play third. And Cal Raleigh can DH no matter what. So I'm going to have Cal Raleigh hitting like fifth, I guess. That's probably a decent spot for him. Okay, so it's time to take a look at our prospects. It's June 1st, once again. The uh, rookie ball season hasn't started yet, so we can kind of ignore these guys for now. And so we're going to skip ahead, and let's look at our guys in high A, because we have our two pitchers in high A that were draft picks last year. One of them is Steven uh, Hajar. I did look up how to pronounce his name. It's Hajar. And he's doing solid. He's doing solid. He's not setting the world on fire, but he's doing solid. And then Jack Leiter, former number two overall pick, suffered that injury last year. Okay, this is good. He had a rough start to the season, but he's been dealing really well lately. He, we, If we want to be aggressive with Jack Leiter, I think what we could do is put him in double A, actually. And I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at that as a potential thing to do. Okay, I'm going to wait a little bit longer on Jack Leiter, but he's he's knocking on the door to double A. And honestly, Hajar's doing solid, too. So it might not be long before he would join Leiter there. Kevin Abel was our fourth round pick, and uh, he's he's just he's just not great. He's just not a great player, and that's okay. You know, we we drafted him based on this high intelligence, but I think what I'm going to do is kind of re relinquish control of him and let the CPU handle him for here on out. Okay, and then so now he, these are our guys that are in A ball. Luis Angel Acuna, he uh, suffered an injury, so I guess he's just back from that injury, so there's not much going on there. Zion Bannister, he's hitting, you know, okay on the surface level, but it's such a high run environment that it's an 82 OPS plus, but that's him. He's only 20. Evan Carter, who is the, uh, the second round from 2020. Evan Carter's doing well. Evan Carter's doing really well. Do we think about moving him to high A? I mean, he's 19. Hmm. What's his uh, What's his BABIP? Can we get the old BABIP? 365, okay. It's not like 450, you know? Okay, I'm going to do... I'm going to be aggressive with Evan Carter. I'm going to move him to high A. Hickory. Because he's doing well. So he'll join uh, Leiter and Hajar. Eduardo Garcia, who we traded for Kansas City. And uh, he's an infielder. I, I, that's what I would just call it. He could play any infield spot decently, but none like insanely well, I guess. And uh, he's not doing too great, but he's young. You know, he's young. 
teenager in A-ball. Sometimes it doesn't go great. Dalen Lyle, he had a rough start, but he's starting to heat up there too. But same thing, teenager in A-ball. So that's him. Apostle, we talked about. He's not doing great. Strotman, trying to get him a spot in the majors. And then, uh, yeah, Tejeda's been brought up to do utility infielder things with Machado out. And and uh, Cal Raleigh is your new uh, designated hitter. So that's your prospect check-in. Some good news there, some bad news there, but uh, let's move on with this season. We got to move on from this Machado injury. It's not going to be easy to do, but we have no choice. Actually, second thought, Jack Leiter is the May pitcher of the month for his league. Let, let's just go ahead and put him in double A. Let's put him there. Go get him, Jackie. Okay, so both the White Sox and Royals have claimed Zach Collins, so he's not going to be ours anymore. That's that's truly the end of that experiment. And you know what? I, I, I gave him a shot, and uh, it didn't work out. Maybe it'll work out with some other team. Wouldn't be surprised, but that's the end of the Zach Collins era in Texas, but the beginning of the Cal Raleigh era as he collects his uh, first hit and walk and RBI in his first start at DH in the majors. I know I was praising Wyatt Mills earlier, and I still think he's done a lot of good things this season, but I think I'm going to have to send him down to AAA, and I'm really just having my hand forced right here by Drew Strontman, who, I mean, look at this guy's last two games, just unbelievable, 14 strikeouts, one walk. You know, he's a complete game here in Albuquerque. Then he goes to Reno, and he's seven and a third. The guy's just been brilliant. He's been brilliant all year in AAA, and I think he deserves his spot, not just in the majors, but in the rotation. So it's my job to figure out how to make that happen for him, and I think it starts with me putting Wyatt Mills back down into AAA. Okay, cool. So here's what my new pitching looks like. Uh, another piece of news I've noticed is that Taylor Trammell, who had actually started to hit well in AAA, has a three-week injury, which is a shame because I was starting to think about calling him back up because, in general, Marwin Gonzalez hasn't been playing well. And so I was thinking maybe Trammell gets another shot in that uh, corner outfield spot. I guess what I'm going to do is I'll probably wait out the three weeks to see what happens with Trammell. But yeah, that's just kind of an update there. Right field very much up for grabs because uh, Marwin Gonzalez has not done too well. All right, it took Strotman a while to get his first start because we haven't had the need for a fifth starter with some off days, but here we are. His first start is against Max Scherzer, interestingly enough, uh, versus Houston, so let's see how he does. Ooh. Ooh. An unceremonious beginning for Mr. Strotman. We'll give him a couple more starts, and then maybe we'll try bullpen. <laughs> Our next injury casualty is Josh Lindblom, torn labrum, out six months. I don't think I realized how old he was. He's he's 35 in the year 2022. I know he's been around. I know he did KBO for a while, but yeah, that's what's uh, his deal. Torn labrum, 12 months. He wasn't exactly great or anything, but he was serviceable. So, you know, we'll miss him, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this hasn't been going great, to be honest with you. My corresponding move is actually going to be to call up Alec Bettinger, who uh, has made his MLB debut this year with the Brewers. However, in this save, has not made his MLB debut yet, so we're going to throw him into the mix. He's just pitched really well in AAA this year, and also last year. So we're going to try him out in the pen, kind of in that long relief role that uh, Lindblom was in. So, you know, just get another Brewers pitcher in there. Why not? That's, that's how you handle these situations, with Brewers pitching. There's a few players that we can celebrate, at least, and Leody Tavares is one of them. He's playing good defense in center field, and he's hitting 300. and I think a lot of that's going to be like, you know, sort of Babbitt pluck, but he's honestly done just a good job, and if he's like a, you know, a 90 OPS plus hitter with good center field defense, that's, that's going to help the team, for real. And then um, J.P. Crawford is hitting better this year than last year. He's still playing his defense. He's on pace for a three-war season, so that's been good to see. 
but excited to see his uh, his progress as a player. Vidal Bruhan's doing great. He's he's also hitting around 300, also on pace for about a three war season. So you know, there's been some bright spots here and there. Solax, you know, picked up where he left off. He continues to hit well for us. But yeah, it's just Marwin Gonzalez at right has been really bad, and and uh, Winker's been a little bit disappointing. But at least his OBP is decent. So we're starting to. F- form a team here at least offensively but the problem is I feel like the pitching has regressed to some degree so I really have to figure that out because um our bullpen ERA is ninth and we were looking for you know a top five maybe even top three bullpen this year so that's where we've actually lost a lot of games whereas last year I feel like we won a lot of games with a really solid bullpen today is also July 11th so that means I get to check out the international amateurs so Last year, we didn't sign anybody. This year, I'm going to take a look, see see what's going on. Okay, this guy, uh, Ricky Negron, is better than any player that was available last year. However, he has low work ethic and low intelligence. So the chances of him developing to these insane heights, I mean, look at this repertoire right here. This guy is like, he knows five pitches, splitter and fork ball. And I mean, he's a, he's a fancy pitcher for sure, but... I don't think I'm going to go for him. Let's look at batters. Is there a batter we could grab? Yeah, I mean, these guys are just kind of okay, you know. So I think I'm going to hold off signing another uh, international amateur this year. So we haven't signed one yet, but generally my approach is to just find someone who I think is elite, you know, max out the $5 million on them. I'm not going to do that this year. I didn't do that last year. Maybe next year. Maybe year three. Third time's the charm. But yeah, that pitcher was really good, but he didn't have the personality attributes that I would uh, you know, link up with success. So I don't think he would necessarily have developed to those heights given his personality attributes. By the way, uh, Brandon Belak just pitched maybe the best pitched game we've seen all year. We had Brandon Belak, you know, Running into uh, Houston, he outduels Bauer. 11 strikeouts, no walks, three hits in seven innings, and then we turn it over to Blake Taylor, who has been, honestly, throughout this save, probably our best reliever, probably at least our most reliable one. So good for him. He picks up the save against his former team. And so, yeah, that was a good quality team win. Great job by Brandon Belak. And, uh, you know, there's there's bright spots here, even though you look at the team record and you're like, ah, this isn't going well. So, you know, we get Machado back next year. I can really hope that he doesn't, you know, have a huge decline in his ratings. If he can stick with these ratings as they are right here, we can start to build uh, a better team for 2023. I don't think 2022 has gone our way, but, you know, there's still more than half a season to play. So we could we could definitely still turn this around. For me, I think that that bullpen and that right field are the trickiest ones. So we're going to see what Trammell does, and we're going to see what we can do in terms of improving the bullpen. P- specifically, uh, the uh, middle relievers have been the, the worst part. Once you get to Hyun Jung Yang and Blake Taylor and Drew Rasmussen, those guys have been really good. But in the middle relief, it's been rough. Some good news here for Nate Lowe, our first baseman out of Mississippi State University. He is up to an 800 OPS. He is the current reigning uh, player of the week. 111 OPS plus on pace for two war season, on pace for 40 home runs. It's still not pretty because of his batting average and, and thus his on base percentage. But I mean, this is the guy we couldn't get to hit at all last year. And uh, he's making it work at the major league level. Lodi Tavares has a minor injury, so we're going to give Dubon a few games at center field just to make sure nothing bad happens. But Leo Tavares has been great. He's been great all year for us. One of our best players so far. Uh, Trammell situation is that he's on a bit of an O for in AAA. So again, we're stuck with Marwin for just a little bit. And you see Marwin's had a few games where he's been able to collect a hit here, two hits there. So that's the situation going on. In uh, in right field, we can check in on uh, Cal uh, Raleigh. And to be honest with you, I mean, this is what uh, this is what uh, you know Zach Collins was doing. So you know, <laughs> let's give Cal Raleigh a chance. But yeah, that's that's where the team's at. Christian Vasquez had a great start offensively, starting to fall back to earth, but he's still been excellent for us as a player. And uh, yeah, 
he's uh, actually going to uh, hopefully be a second time All Star. He was a 2021 All Star, and I was looking at him in the voting, and I think he's got a chance to make it in 2022. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Okay, so July 11th is draft day. We are 36 and 48, so we're 84 games into the season, approximately halfway through. Got a few more games to go until the All-Star break. I'm ready to to make some changes real quick. I think what I'm going to do, first of all, is I've been rolling with uh, nine pitchers for the time being. Not really sure why. Uh, I think the main reason is that Tejeda suffered a uh, a bone bruise, and then I kind of was like, I don't really have an infielder I want to bring back up, and I have a lot of infield versatility already, so I just figured I'd just call up another pitcher. In this case, it was Kyle Wright as a long reliever, and then Jonathan Hernandez came back from his injury. So, yeah, as far as relievers go, I guess I could, you know, I mean... Bukowskis is like, I'm going to walk someone every time I pitch. That's kind of his deal. <laughs> he's got 8.7 walks per night. He's like, I'm going to just walk a guy, and then we're just going to, you're just going to have to deal with it. But he is getting outs because he is nasty. So I'm not sure if I want to send him down. Uh, Alec Bettinger, you know, he's he's on a roll, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to set him down. I mean, he look, he's only got, has two uh, appearances, but you know, this is a good appearance right here. Three innings pitched, just, you know, he was perfect. So I'm not going to send down Bettinger. I think, I, I guess I'll send that down uh, Kyle Wright, you know. We'll see what he can do, uh, AAA. But yeah, Strotman's had a couple more starts that have been better. They haven't been super by any means, but they have been better. So I'll give him that. Still want to see what he can do in the rotation. But yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Tramel back up because he's, you know, hit a hot streak. He's up to an 800 OPS. And you know what he did? He hit a home run. He hit his first home run. It took him 250 plate appearances, you know, between these two levels. But he has hit a home run. He's hitting 316. If we can just get him to be like a 350 OBP guy, I can... You know, I can forgive the lack of power. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring up Tramel, And then we're going to take Marwin off of right field, reinstate Tramel into right field. The other good news is he's gotten some experience at right field, so he's built up to at least a 50 there. So that's nice. And then that's going to stay the same. Basically, we can have Trammell, um like backing up in center if need be. I don't mind that. But yeah, and then the other move we can do is uh, that uh, Leoti's, uh, you know, day-to-day -day injury is over, so we can bring him in back into the mix in the lineup. We just didn't want to play him on a day-to-day -day injury because he was doing too good. He was doing too good. This guy's been great. I would be interested to see him in an all-star game as well. I know we talked about... um. Uh, Christian Vasquez, but I mean, uh, you know, Leo Tavares, he's playing good defense at center, on pace for four war, he's hitting 315, on pace for 25 stolen bases. I'd love to see him in an all-star game too, and he's only 23, so he's been great, good for him. But yeah, that's what I'm going to leave you guys. When we tune in for part two of the season, we will start with the first year player draft. And uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's a wrap on this episode. Hope you all are enjoying the content. I know there was some frustrating stuff in this episode, probably most most of all that May Machado injury, but you know, we got to we got to fight on through and I just think you guys, you know, you guys don't want to hear me just complaining, you know. I I feel like I've hit some bad luck, but I I don't want to be a complainer. So, hope you all uh enjoy the OTP content. Let me know in the comments below and uh yeah, I will see you all in a couple days.